Man, I had I had someone call me a neo Marxist. <laughs> what is what does that even mean? No, but no, but seriously. Um so I, I had someone call me a neo Marxist. Uh and I had to I had to explain to them that that was a term used by anti-Semites when they were directly calling me an anti-Semite for being pro-Palestine, which is just nonsense. It's absolutely insane. Today, I have a different video for you guys. Uh, we're going to be looking at some replies, some angry, uh, you know, virulent, fragile, male, um, Zionist, right-wing replies to my comments on things. Um, so I'm just going to start reading them off for you guys and, uh, I'll show you guys visuals, you know, in the video and it'll, it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. So the first one I wanted to talk about was, uh, this one where it was these IDF soldiers kind of doing like a, a Ginyu force sailor moon, sort of like star of David formation together. And, um, I commented on it and I said, true heroes murdering children and committing genocide just like the nazis and then uh this person replied nope thumb thumb thumbs up emoji uh israel flag emoji and then thumbs up again and then they said then they said i really feel like i would like to engage you on your anti-semitic values you're neo-marxist but i won't waste <laughs> it's and also their grammar is like terrible so it's hard to read um, you're neo-Marxist, but I won't waste my time because it's more valuable than the money wasted getting indoctrinated into this claptrap of whatever college you went to. Remember, there was no war on October 6th. Don't reply, dude. I know you want to, but don't, don't waste my time. He's like really like trying to threaten me with a good time. <laughs> like, please don't, please don't respond to me. I'm begging you, please, please don't. Uh, don't waste my time. I've heard it all before uh, by anti-Semites like you. You just got to know that there's a lot of people more than you realize, but think your movement is rotten. Maybe you could be salvaged. I don't know. Probably not. 30 year olds think they know everything until they realize they don't. And I said, this is, this is, and after I, I just, I had to like kind of process that for a little bit. I was like, what? <sighs> you know first off you don't even know who i am you know you have no idea who i am you you you're, you're coming at me i'm not even first off i'm not even 30 yet so i guess i look older than i than i should um and also second um i was not indoctrinated into communist ideas by college universities because most college universities are in the pockets of Israelist lobbies anyway. Uh, they are conservative institutions that do everything they can to uh, keep student protests uh, from happening. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the, la you know, the last video that I'm, not the last video that I made, but the one before that, where I talked about the student protests and the police brutality. Um, Kent State, anybody? Whatever. Uh, but, but this was my response. It really is tra tragic that so many people have fallen on the wrong side of history like yourself. Unlike you, I actually care for human life and the Jewish faith rather than pretending through zeo-Nazi propaganda. I love I love the term zeo-Nazi because it just really kind of it really it really pulls into into the light that um that connection that Zionism has to Nazism and how they're just two sides of the same ethno su supremacist sort of uh, white supremacist narrative so basically i said the palestinians are occupied by subtler colonists just like the indigenous americans to the british colonial project and both committed genocide against the native peoples october 7th you mean because in, in the last comment he he said october 6th uh the uh october 7th you mean when israel killed its own citizens as an excuse for their own genocide I wish people would see their humanity instead of believing that Israel has the right to kill whomever they deem other. Your comment is really ironic and tragic. Um, but yeah, that was, that was, that was a crazy thing with the, um, with the uh, Hannibal directive that was given to IDF soldiers to basically kill their own soldiers or not kill their own soldiers, but kill their own people um, 
as a justification for the start of this latest bout of ethnic cleansing. Um, then they were, and then I also said, I am not a neo-Marxist. That's a term concocted by anti-Semites and neo-Nazis. I am a classical Marxist and anarchist, and I wish upon you what the Israelis have done to the Palestinians. Um, then he said, then he replied, uh, like two hours, two hours after that one. And I know it's Iran that funds your protests. Your secret is no longer a secret. Keep sucking up that mullah money, mullah money. <laughs> you brave soldier, you clown face, clown face, clown face. You've beclowned yourself. You're searching for social acceptance. You have lost your way, dude. I mean, like, I mean, he just has no clue what he's talking about. He has no idea, no idea, no earthly concept. Iran is absolutely funding all of our protests here in the United States. Uh, don't you know how students have an organized lobby that where they the, a foundation where they receive money from other countries? Oh wait, no, that's the universities. That's the government. That's the politicians that have that. Sorry, like they've just been they've just fallen down. They've been sucked down the right wing like drain hole so far down that their their hair is caught in all every every tangle they can't they can't like see reality anymore and they can only see the insane right-wing conservative fascist american propaganda that they have been spoon-fed their entire lives basically i said you're so silly <laughs> i said you're so silly uh that's what i commented back uh and then he said th th this is after i said you're so silly he responded you just throwing around terms you don't know the definition of. You can't be a Marxist in an anarchist at the same time, dude. Take some time and look up definitions before you start throwing around, <laughs> throwing them around like you dope. <sighs> so, I, I would say that, uh, you know, maybe at the time that Marx was alive, he was against, you know, some anarchists like Bakunin and things like that. So, I'll I'll give him some credit there for having like a, a kind of like a glancing knowledge of of anarchists versus Marxists, but there has been a lot of time between then and now for the ideologies and ideas to kind of like intermingle and coalesce into new things. Um, for example, there's anarcho-communism. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Uh, Peter Kropotkin, uh, Malatesta lots of other guys that were um, very much for a stateless, moneyless, classless society built upon the basis of mutual aid and cooperation rather than using uh, state power as a method of uh, dict dictatorial control. Um, and, and when I say dictatorial, you know, um, I'm more so referring to the stalinist vein of things where it's like all right we we have our council now let's round up all of the guys who are slightly more left than we are that are less authoritarian than we are i.e the the rest of the communists in russia that were rounded up um and trotsky had to leave you know trotsky had to run away um i'm, I'm glossing over a lot of history but you but if you know what i'm talking about then you kind of get what i'm talking about I don't know if this is like clear though, by the way, like this is, this video is not very scripted. Um, I'm probably saying, um, a lot, which is fine. You know, I have a lot of things on my mind that it's, it's hard for me to just put it all into one gigantic single essay. So I feel like it would be easier for me to just do these smaller videos and bite sized things and kind of have it be more conversational. Like you guys know what I'm saying right you know what i'm saying <laughs> okay um and then i said actually i can be both at the same time marxism and anarchism both have lots of lessons to be learned from but i doubt you would even get the barest definition right if pressed for one and i think that was the last reply that i got uh from that asshole there are lots of other replies that i've got that are just from complete and utter nincompoops Someone posted a, a photo. It was like a quote from Marx in Capital, and it said, In capitalist society, spare time is acquired for one class by converting the whole lifetime of the masses into labor time. Um, 
And someone responded to that and said, did Marx write anything that made any kind of sense? Doesn't seem so. And then the next person replied to that, which I, I liked their reply. This is on threads. Uh, this is Instagram's version of Twitter. Um, if you're not on there, I'm on there. Go follow me, Joseph Ryan Banks, at Joseph Ryan, Joseph Ryan Banks. Um, uh, they said, Marx is the most important political theorist in the last 200 years precisely because he makes so much sense. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this, he's right. Then they said, he's completely, that is another person, uh, Dick Bison Art. This is what Dick said. He's completely irrelevant. What are you smoking? And uh, then I replied to I took I took the bold the bold cue to respond to Dick and I said Marx is not irrelevant if that's what you th- uh, if that's what you think then you've been living in a fantasy your entire life maybe step outside and touch grass better yet maybe engage with the actual writing of the guy instead of blanket villainizing him Marx is one of the most important thinkers of the 19th century and his work is still painfully relevant to worker struggles all across the globe and then they were su- they replied please name one nation or society that embraces Marx that did not either collapse. It wasn't forced to embrace, uh, varding degrees, varying degrees of capitalism. That's what he means or uh, to keep their economy going. Now that's, that's kind of one of those fun, uh, they think is like a gotcha question, like a gotcha moment where it's like name one Marxist communist society that uh, isn't, uh, failing or is, uh, is doing good right now. Uh, when we neglect to mention the fact that nearly every like actually existing socialist society, i.e. like um, in countries like Cuba or Vietnam, where uh, they are doing their hardest to stand against American imperialism in every possible way that they can. And America, you know, they, America has this whole propaganda that communism doesn't work. Communism will never work in any country ever. Uh, at the same time, they do their hardest they work their their hardest to commit as many coups and destabilize as many left-wing governments around the world as they possibly can in fear of the working class rising up and gaining power and actually implementing like marxist policies and and communist ideas so it's like if it doesn't work if if it's never worked in a society then then why is there so much uh political assassination of it you know why is there so much of a push for those countries to be destabilized to be destroyed when it uh in your own words doesn't work at all um but there's also you know the the line that he makes about uh them embracing certain capitalist ideas well once those countries have once those countries have to intermingle with western nations and western societies and participate in trade otherwise their entire economy will collapse uh it is unfortunate yes they have to implement some sort of uh capitalist trade framework um but that is at the at the expense uh that 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 is at the basically at the at with a gun to their head you know like america says you better do what we say you better pick up these uh certain capitalist policies or we will uh bomb the fuck out of your entire country and kill all of you and it's like what can we do (sighs) it's really stupid it's really stupid you know and i me being being an anarchist like i can i can understand like real politique i can understand like anarchism as a lot of ideals and things that um you know marxist ideas don't necessarily mesh well with uh like marxist leninist ideas in particular where they believe that you know there needs to be a vanguard party that takes over the reins of the state to implement their own policies and we see how how well that works um but it's a but it's a hell of a lot better than uh what capitalism has done to the world what capitalism has done to the average human being like you and i uh capitalism creates uh, oh, excuse me uh capitalism creates this these unwinnable circumstances that you you have to participate or else you die you know and that's what we call coercion in anarchist uh discourse and to an ex- to an, to the, to another extent you know ml ideas do uh in some way or another also unfortunately rely on some sort of coercion by the state but it is more so a necessity 
to make sure that counter you have you because you you were going to have like fascist counter revolutionaries in any sort of communist revolution going on there um and and that's in an armed resistance uh you know armed revolution what what have you um but me being an anarchist is not incompatible with supporting any uh any group that is against uh western imperialism you know at the end of the day western imperialism is the enemy it, it is the number one enemy the empire is the enemy uh and and a lot of people forget that the rebels were the good guys uh what one concept that i found very um interesting when i was looking at some of zoe baker's videos i don't know if you know them um but they talk a lot about how in uh in anarchist thought you know it's understood that new this is something that i've commented on uh new societies require new conditions to be actively created for the old structures of society to wither away america is just another slave run empire that wanted its profits for itself now it, it is a anarchist concept that you cannot use the master the master's tools to dismantle the master's house um you have to actively create new forms of societal relations social relations that are based upon mutual aid that are based upon the concept of cooperation and mutualism and uh communalism where it is not hierarchical at its base and there is not the power dynamic uh involved and we we see that concept being kind of understood in higher phase communism and upper phase communism that Marx writes about. Marx writes about uh, a classless, moneyless, stateless society, and that is effectively the exact same thing that anarchism uh, aims to achieve. So, this video kind of got off uh, on the ra off the rails. Uh, was it ever really on the rails to begin with? I don't know. Um, but that's that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. I'll be working on another video talking about the Gaza death toll. Um, so. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.